everybody and welcome to Life School 101 TV and Walking Through Life. We are so excited to be here with you today. And today is an extremely special show and I feel so honored to be a part of this. We have Linda Carbino, my producer, my executive producer of the show and co-host. We have Kayla and we have Ted. And today we are talking about mental illness and we are also talking about mental wellness. And there is a balance in both of those things. And so today's conversation is about how we cope and how we manage and how we live when we're diagnosed with a problem. So Linda, welcome to the show. And I'm so excited to be doing this. Oh yeah, me too. And thank you for welcoming me to the show. I haven't been here for a while. Oh, just kidding. I can't wait to say that. <laughs> I had to say that. Yeah, and you know, this, top, this topic can be serious, but it doesn't have to be. It can be a lot of fun, you know? And I'd like to start by saying, you know, I was diagnosed with borderline personality and PTSD. And many, many years in and out of the hospital, you know? And then I figured out, I was going to research it and find out what uh, uh, borderline consisted of. And once I did that and I saw it and I identified with some of the stuff that uh, they categorize as, as uh, borderline, like, you know, being very manipulated, suicidal all the time, uh, can't hand handle your anger, um, manipulation as far as trying to get people to do stuff for you when you hurt yourself or whatever. And actually it's all a cry for help is what it is. Uh, and for me, I think the worst days that I had was I didn't have anybody to go and, and talk to. And so it became very drastic. And with borderlines, we tend to react before um, thinking about it. So over the years, once I found that out, I was able to actually forgive myself and ask for forgiveness from uh, my family. But then I went one step further and started really researching it. Why am I this way? What helps, what doesn't help? And so the first book I ever read was Louise Hay's How to Heal Your Life. And um, from, from there, you know, I didn't, want, I didn't want the typical stigma of people saying, this is all borderlines like this, you know? And I wanted to fight through it and find a way for not only myself to recover, but to help others recover too. There's a great program for um, borderline. It's called a Dialectical Behavior Therapy. And uh, it's very intense and it's very good. And from that, I learned a lot about um, how to overcome some of my comfort zones and actually finding my confidence and knowing that it's just a title. Does it, you, maybe that title will follow you for the rest of your life, but recovery, recovery follows you too. And you know, one wow, I think that's Linda, yeah. that's profound. I want to stop you right there because I think that's very important to say yes. at this point is that no matter what diagnosis you receive, you then have the responsibility to take those next steps to bring yourself to wellness. Yep. And whenever you know, I've, I've received some really serious diagnosis as far as health issues. And I was able to bring those to a level of wellness by becoming my own partner. And it, so what you said is amazing. And, it, and it's both in physical and in mental health. Exactly. It's worth it to take the time. And it also all depends on where you're at and whether you're capable of recovering. Because a lot of us can't find that recovery. So we have to depend on a lot of people for that. Um, but I, I would like to say that with encouragement and um, taking care of ourselves and we do that every day whether we're well or we're not at least we we know what's going on we know what it is and that's why it's so important that we have so many different people on different levels that can talk about their different mental illnesses like Ted and Kayla um, so I just want to encourage you both to know that this is so important and so brave of both of you to be able to come on and talk about this so is it okay if Mary starts with some questions yeah, for you, Kayla? absolutely, absolutely. So Kayla, welcome to the show and thank you for being here. Will you start out this conversation by telling us about you? About me, well, uh -huh. I am 31 years old. I am a wife, I am a mother of two and I as well have borderline personality disorder. I actually didn't get diagnosed till about four years ago 
um, growing up my whole life, it's I've always been in the category of having just depression and anxiety. But I knew like deep down there was something else going on. And then uh, once I got the diagnosis, it, it made sense. You know, antidepressants weren't working for me. You know, I would have fits of rages and I couldn't figure out like what was going on. And, um, and life is hectic, you know, one of my sons has special needs, but I still, you know, we, we get up, we have a routine, we do our thing, and I still walk out of the house every day, you know, and I'm able to, to be out, out there. And I think a lot of it too is that accepting that we have mental illness may be hard for a lot of people, but once, you, once you've seen that it is, it can be helped, or you know you can help yourself with this. I think that that um, that's a very important tool that we that we can we can use. And you know, I mean, there's all kinds of research books and everything else, but nobody knows it as well as people that have it. You know what I mean? Right. So this is an educational oh, sure. opportunity. So, yeah. Oh, for sure. So Kayla, when after you got diagnosed, tell me about how you brought yourself to a level of balance and how you learn to incorporate this into your life. Because, you know, in the beginning, it can be very hard to filter out uh, life and try to get everything to work correctly. So what were your steps to bringing yourself to that place? So, you know, at first hearing the diagnosis, it was like really hard because a lot of people, like Linda said, they don't understand it. So they like assume one thing, but it's really like not what it is. It's, it's not really what's going on, you know? So it was really hard to like, um, not necessarily get people to understand, but having myself be okay that they don't understand and not yeah. get angry about that. And then, you know, the next step after that, I've always self coped you know, the best I could, you know, and I still do to this day, you know, 10 minute extra long showers, reading a book, coloring, just something, having quiet time as much mm, as possible. So important. And, um, and that helps me every day because there are, there are lots of days where I don't want to, you know, like I'm not a wintry kind of person, even though I'm in New England, you know, and I feel like especially um, daylight savings is hard for me as well. So self-care is, is a huge thing, you know, and, and like Linda said, research, doing as much um, reading as possible and finding other people um, who have, you know, the, the same kind of um, diagnosis and, and f bouncing off ideas, what mm -hmm. helps, what doesn't help, um, and, that's, and that's a big help. Yeah, it's a great it's tool. It's wonderful, and I think that tools are so very important with yeah. the management of any kind of issue that we're having. And I love that you, you, you know, your message to me is that you're very committed to being well. You're very committed to being balanced and being there for your family and being there as a mother. And so, you know, what I want people out there to know is just because you receive a diagnosis, it does not mean that you cannot create an amazing life out of that and that and, and you can create that balance. You can't, but you have to be willing to do it from within. A doctor cannot fix it. A psychologist cannot lead you in that direction. It has to be something in here. And the self-love is really that first piece. Yeah. It's probably one of the biggest pieces. And it's and I think it's one of the biggest pieces that creates a lot of mental illness is because we're on this journey where we don't know how to love ourselves through a lot of these very difficult emotions and, and, and we don't have the tools. And so, Kayla, will you please speak on that a little bit about how things have adjusted for you since you've been on the path of wellness for yourself? So I, you know, like I said, a lot of it is the weather. So I know for myself once, I want to say like September comes until like it's 90 degrees outside. Those are my times when I'm really most vulnerable. You know, yeah. the sun goes down at like three in the afternoon, you know, and I, and I know my body to know that there's a change coming. So and that's the time for me that I reach out for help. You know, I go to my primary care. Um, I just started seeking out therapy. Um, and that way I can 
not mess up my household, you know, um, taking care of two kids, a husband, you know, and I try not to stir any of that up with my own emotions and my own, you know, feeling down because, you know, the weather or, you know, especially the holiday season, holidays are very, very hard for mm -hmm. me because, you know, being a child, you, you have so many friends and family around, but they don't prepare you that when you get older, you do that on your own. You know, and then the um, feeling of isolation is very, very hard. So, you know, around the winter months, I try my best to keep myself um, visited with other people as much as possible. So I don't feel that, you yeah. know, isolation and emptiness, emptiness and, yeah. and that helps out quite a bit. Yeah, because that's one of the biggest things about borderline is the emptiness, the loneliness, the feeling like you're not loved and you don't love yourself. And I wanted to say one thing, because borderlines are, are like, most of them just see it like this, okay, black, white. There's no gray in between. And until, you know, like Kayla's done and myself's done a lot of work so we can find that, you know, the darkness isn't as bad or the white isn't as bad. So you come together and you get kind of like a stable thought. And the other thing I want to say too, to people out there that maybe just found out that they've got borderline or have just found out that they've got schizophrenia or whatever it is, um, that, y you know, reaching out for help is a good thing. You know, and accepting the fact that you have a mental illness is very hard. But um, I think I want, I want to make sure that people get the message that if this is something that's just too hard for you to understand or too hard to do, it's okay. It's okay. Um, it happens in your time. And if you're stuck at the moment, you can seek out help. And I know Kayla and I and Ted have some good recovery stories. So I just want to make sure that you know you're okay, okay? You, you know you're okay. We're not putting anything on you, whether you have already found recovery or you're still stuck where you were. So I just want to make sure that wow. you... Yeah. I totally agree with you, Linda, and I think it's also really important that we say here that, you know, a lot of people diagnosed or undiagnosed or whatever feel these feelings and have these things going on in their lives yeah and i think that you know a lot of what we're talking about here is is doing what we need to do for ourselves right, exactly. putting that oxygen mask on first yeah. and getting help is that oxygen mask it's like okay i need some help up here awesome it's time to find help what do i need to do next action plan yeah. and take that step folks because regardless you you can turn this around and yep. and linda i think that's so important linda i want to i i think we need to bring ted into this conversation there's um, the teddy bear so, <laughs> yes there's our ted so <laughs> will you introduce him and tell us uh, why don't you and ted we'll talk about how you got started together and started together yeah not our night yeah. sex. <laughs> we uh, met in uh, we actually met in uh, 2000, no, um, 1995 is when we met. 95? Yeah, the end of yeah. 2000. I mean, right, my dates are all messed up. Um, but we have a very unique love story. You know, not many people. Schizophrenic. Yeah. Good voices. Yeah, talk a little bit about that. You, you know, sometimes going to the hospital and relationships and dealing with me getting sometimes angry sometimes. Sometimes I'll take a nap, but I don't feel good. It's like he's changing medication right now, so he's... Changing medication. Yep. Do you want to tell Mary how it feels to have schizophrenia? Not good. Describe what happens to you. I feel tired and stuff. And what about up here? My head hurts sometimes. From the voices, right? From the voices. Um, you want to tell her um, some of the tools that you that we use to help you with that? Talk. Yep. Yeah. Talk there. Yeah. And it, it's, uh, it's hard for me when he goes through it because it, it hurts me, you know? And with schizophrenia, it's something that's always there. You know, there's not- It's always there. Yeah. And sometimes, sometimes he needs to go to the hospital to get help, medication chains. And you know, I, I've had to do that before too have to go and um, get medication changed. And for me, when I did that, it really, really helped me because the new medication made a difference. And um, 
with Ted, I think when he needs to go to the hospital, it's really hard on me. Yeah. But I know it would help him. Yeah. And sometimes well, they, and you two have a very unique relationship. Yeah. yeah and it's a know. very special relationship. Go yeah. ahead, Ted. We have a good relationship. He cooks the best cookies. <laughs> I cook the best cookies. <laughs> oh, are you the baker in the family? Yeah. We're gonna have a bake sale. Yeah. Call Ted. <laughs> That's wonderful. So Ted, what are your, what are the things that you do and enjoy every day to keep yourself balanced? I watch TV, go out and have coffee at Tucker Box. Every morning? Every morning. I go for walks every morning. And you also got men's group. Got men's group too, on Wednesdays. You wanna tell Mary a little bit about men's group? I'll talk to each other and men's group by our lives. And that's important too to have that. Yeah. Kind of outlet where you can it's go. It's very into. important. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, and that support system, that support system, the friendships, the connections, it's one of the biggest parts of this. We often, you know, when we are diagnosed, with an illness or a mental illness, that's one of the first pieces that we tend to isolate, either because we cannot participate, because we don't feel well enough, or we're afraid of what other people may think of us. And so right. it's such an important piece yeah. of this. And, and so, Ted, when you are having an episode where things are not going well, what are some of the strategies that you use? I lay down and take naps. I'm gonna meditate, it's more. Meditate. Yeah. And some, and the voices often say bad things, right? Yeah, voices say bad things. What do they tell you, Ted? To pull a bridge and stuff. Yeah, he's got the depression type, so it's kind of like on the edge of suicidal things. Suicidal it says. stuff. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we've, Ted's done a lot of hospitalization and, and he hasn't been hospitalized, what, for four years now? Four or five, four or five. years ago. I've yeah, he was working, hospital. he was working and it was getting just too, too hard. I can't work you know? anymore. Yep. Yeah. Well, you do, you make cookies and clean the house yeah. and yeah, take care of the little kitties. Yeah. What did you, what was your reaction to Ted when you first met him, Kayla? Oh boy, I, you know, well, you know, the thing about Ted is he's so friendly. He's Isn't like, he? he's like the friendliest person you could ever meet, you know, and that, that welcomes you, you know, cause he'll sit with you and just, you know, and, and you, when he smiles, you just see, he just, he just lights up and he just glows, you know, and he'll make small talk with you and, you know, and, and chatting back to him and that you can tell with his expression that just means so much to him. So and he's fun, and we've and we've known each other for years. So we're always, you know, picking at each other and joking around, and and it's and it's just a fun cat and mouse game that we play together. And she it's gave him fun. a ride. She gave him a ride in a car. What kind of car did she have? Camaro. Yeah, yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah, and he loved it. <laughs> yeah, he went for a ride with Kayla, <laughs> and then that's all he talked about for about a month. <laughs> Camaro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it good. sounds like you need another ride in that Camaro, Ted. She I don't think have we need anymore. to I know. I gotta <laughs> get in. I gotta get another one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and you know. So I want to put this out to the three of you, and any of you can answer this. So, what would you like the audience to know about mental illness? <laughs> you want to start, Ted? No. Who, yeah. Would you like the audience to know? Absolutely. Kind of hard life living a illness. Kitties help. Mm. Yeah. I mean, yes, it's definitely hard, but we're not like scary, you know, or you know, so easily misjudged that yes. you know, uh, you know, somebody may have this that they're always you know a, a downer and never want to do anything, and that's that's not the case at all. Because a lot of people you know feed off that they want to do something, they want to be included, and sometimes they can, sometimes they can't. You mm -hmm. know, and 
patience, 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 and to find that, you know, either support group or that family member or friend that, you know, is like your buddy system, mm -hmm. you know, somebody you can go to, somebody you can talk to, whether it's a good day or a bad day, and, you know, for them to, to support you the best that they can. Boy, she, 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 that was good, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That was really good feeling. Now what am I supposed to say? I don't know. You're dropping your stuff. Uh, anyway, that, oh, I dropped the battery. Oh, yeah. no. Okay. So this is what I'd like to, to kind of like say about it and summer it up a little bit is that we are judged. There is a big stigma about mental illness. And people don't talk about it. They don't feel comfortable if somebody suggests me, well, uh, maybe you should see a therapist. Oh, I'm not crazy or, or whatever. You know, a lot of people feel that way. So they end up not getting the help that they could really use, you know. And, uh, and if they don't have that, then they don't know what strategies might, might help them. You know what I mean? But it doesn't necessarily have to be therapy either. Like there's books out there. You know, get a book about your diagnosis and read that or, or watch shows like this one. This is great, you know. And every, every single, everybody deserves to have a life when they don't have to worry about stigma and um, being characterized as crazy or whatever. And, you know, we often see people out in the community that you know you have mental illness, like they're talking to themselves or whatever it is, and it creates a lot of fear for people. And I would encourage people to go to www.nami.com. At NAMI, they, they are there for family and friends to help them be able to understand mental illness. Well, <coughs> Linda, I wanted to mention, um, in addition to you doing this show, you have been a producer, you're an executive producer with CATV. Uh, you started walking through life, is that 13 years ago? Yeah, well, yeah, it was 2005. Yeah. yeah. So you, so that, and that's, and you have been a huge advocate for mental health awareness. You have worked with government uh, yep. officials to change laws. You have worked <laughs> with rehabilitation centers. You have worked with drug rehab centers. Yep. You've really done the full spectrum of bringing this to attention, not only in your local area but global. And, and you are a superhero of being an advocate. Well, it's, I mean, you. really, seriously. I'm not kidding. You have been a person. That's what amazes me about you is not only have you taken this and embraced it and overcome it in your own life in a way that you have created your own balance, but now you, you know, for 13 years, you've been speaking publicly as a representative for everybody. And I can't thank you enough for that. That is absolutely astronomical and amazing. Thank you. Yeah, well, you, you know, I could say the same about you. Uh, that you are very inspirational and uh, we work well together and doing this show and different you know we've got so many that we can so many experts too that come on and talk about um, life skills and things like that but I'd consider Kayla and, and Ted both experts on on uh, living with mental illness too yeah, yeah. absolutely thank you yeah. So my last question because I know we're probably getting closer towards the end for yeah. each of you is how would you like to see the world change when it comes to mental illness? I think for me, it would, again, be be patience. You know, there are a lot of people with mental illness and uh, people around them feel that they cry for help so many times. And that's not necessarily the case. You know, they just need somebody to talk to, whether it's the same story a million times or like one time, they need that comfort, knowing that somebody's listening, know, knowing that somebody is there for them. And we don't see a lot of that now, you yeah. know, in, in everyday life. You know, everyone is in a rush to do something, to go somebody, to go somewhere and not take the time to just sit and, and have a conversation and, and learn things. And that's something big that, you know, I, I would like to see um, in the future is, you know, having people in general, everybody be more educated on yes. all types of, of different things and not to be so judgy. You know, they, they see, they hear a diagnosis or, you know, um, or, or learn of one and and they automatically assume, you know, one thing, and that's that's not the case. 
Absolutely. And Ted, what would your answer be to that? What would you like to see change in the world around mental illness? More people realize you that they're hurting. Yep. And instead of praying, it can stop. It's got a hard life. But Ted, you do a lot of peer work too. You see people on the street that may have the same kind of problem that you have, yeah. and I've seen you go and talk to them. And yeah. Yeah, relate to them. But I think peer support's talk to very people important. And stuff. Yep. We talk people with Tucker Box. Who's your friends at Tucker Box? Jeff. A guy named Jeff. He's a firefighter. He's a firefighter. <coughs> yep. He gave me a fifty dollar card for a birthday. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> beautiful. And uh not a card I got Twenty dollars for a coffee card for yeah. birthday. I mean, ways, yeah. Yeah. Yes, it's all about um, helping others, and it's all about you know feeling, you because know, I can remember how desperate that I was before. I can remember that desperate, so I will never forget that. And if I can be helpful to anybody, you know, I will. I really want to do that because it is something that affects all of us to a, to a certain level, whether we got family members or we have it ourselves or whatever. And um, I mean, Mary, I think that having Ted and Caleb on was very good today and I'd like to have them come back. Oh, I would love that. I would love that anytime both of you want. And I think we should continue having this conversation yes. on a regular basis because I, it's such an important topic. Yeah. And like I said, if there's anybody out there at Life School that um, have any questions or anything, leave comments after the video or, you know, you can message us with, with questions and we can get them answered for you. Uh, participation in this would be great. Um, and I think my last message, Mary, would be is that we need more Marys, too, that are open to understanding and open to getting to know more. She was very excited about get, getting to know more about us. Yeah. So. That's my message. <laughs> well, and my message is I'm so grateful for the opportunity to talk to all three of you for your honesty, for your willingness to be vulnerable. Um, I know that that is not always easy, and I really appreciate the fact that you did this because this is going to reach a lot of people who may be needing help right now. And to those of you who are needing help right now, I want to put this out to you. If you need help, the time is now. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to reach out. Pick up that phone. If you're suicidal, call the suicide hotline. We will have that number attached here to this video. Mm -hmm. And if you and and here's the other thing is that asking for help is the first step to making it better. And oftentimes when we are stuck in the middle of a storm and we don't feel that we can get out, that's the lowest it's gonna be. When you go ask for help and you provide yourself with that opportunity, it's only gonna 